So, wrong way. I want to take you on another journey. Um, sorry, it's not a nice one for once. Um, just imagine you're sitting in that race car, you're on the limit, full speed, you're coming up to a corner, a long right hander with 340 kph, and you're turning into this corner, and you know, okay, your opponent is just ahead. He's just ahead of you, and it's essential for you to pass. It. So what do you do, basically? You're on the absolute limit. You're driving, you're turning into the corner, your head shakes, and you know, okay, you can't go further. And you somehow manage to pass him on the outside. That's the story about this. It's, it's a real story. And then, just in the last second when you think, you got it, you hear on the radio, come on Dominic, push, you can do it, push, 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 we need to achieve it. And then suddenly, what happens, it's so hard to describe, you just spin. Everything spins, 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 there's just everything flying around, you don't know anymore where you are, and suddenly you turn up, you fly off, you see the sky, suddenly time goes really slow, you hit back on the ground, hit into the barrier, and then there's silence. You can see nothing, there's silence. So what I want to talk about today, what I want to tell you is about my experience with confrontation because I think confrontation, or that's what I figured out for myself, is the thing that we grow, or at least myself, grow the most from it. So what my aim is for tonight is that at least one, two, or in the best case, three people leave this room saying, all right, I'm ready to take on my biggest challenges. I'm ready to face my biggest insecurities. If this clown up here could do it, I can do it as well. So just a little metaphor. I want you to imagine it's dinner time. You've invited some friends, there's a good swing, you're in a good mood, and you just want to cook that perfect dinner. And that's basically a little bit what, what professional sports is about. It's about the perfection, chasing always th this perfection. You know you cannot get it, but at least you're trying as hard as you can. So you're cooking that dinner, everything goes fine, and then you figure out, okay, I need these three, four ingredients which make the dinner perfect. These ingredients make the distinction between dinner was good, it was fine, or people saying, or your friends saying, wow, it was amazing, can you give me the recipe, please? Okay, so you, you know these special ingredients, that's what you need. But it's like, I don't know, two minutes before eight, and the stores are closing, you don't know where you will get them, so you have to figure out. They're super, super hard to get. And that's basically what my story is about. I figured out four ingredients for myself that I absolutely didn't have and had to change my life 180 degrees in order to get them, in order to be able to compete in professional sports. So the first one was coping with criticism, which is not easy, fully understand. I was, as you can also read, an outsider, a complete outsider. I was extremely insecure as a kid. It was partly to, due to my character and partly to, to, due to the way I grew up. Because I grew up in France, and you know, kids can be evil when coming back. I couldn't speak any German, so I went to school and I had literally had no friends because they were all saying, I don't know, they, he can't speak uh, proper German. And so I got into a position where I really had no one around me, which was fine at the moment, but it just made me super, super insecure. And uh, I have a little story about that. Um, story about the dead bird. One day, when I was nine years old, I can remember, it was the only time someone invited me to, to ride to school with the bikes with them. So I was super happy, I was nervous for like three days before that, because someone had asked me to come with them. Okay, so I drove, uh, rode the bike with them, and then suddenly they stopped and turned back, and I turned my head back, and there was a dead bird. Just to show you my insecurity, they started to tell me that I was responsible for the death of the bird, that I drove over it. And this, it's quite actually hard thinking back to this moment because 
the emotions come a little bit up. Um, and that was a super um, yeah, hard fo moment for me. And I believed that after like three, four minutes, I believed, okay, I killed, I killed the bird and they hated me for that. That's what, what, what the thoughts in my mind were. And that made me turn around, go home, hide, my mother couldn't find me for like four or five hours, I can remember. I have everything in my mind, like I can imagine like it was yesterday. And I didn't want to, well, went to school for two, uh, didn't go to school for two days because I was so down. So going to racing, it was really hard for me, at the, uh, especially at the beginning, because you're exposed to a lot of criticism from the beginning on, whether you do something wrong or you do something right. It really doesn't matter. People just go off on you and say, you did this, you did that, and that's not how you should do it. And also an example, when I was 14 years old, I won my first uh, championship, the Austrian uh, championship in go-karts. And I can re remember, I read so many comments on the internet. Now I know these were people who were just jealous about it, uh, saying, yeah, what he's doing is cheating. And uh, that was the, the nice part. Um, the bad, really bad parts were, um, if I remember right, um, no one will miss you, uh, or no one will miss him if he was dead. So it was because they, they didn't think that I was reading it. So that was something where I was, I was devastated and I didn't know how to handle it. And one day, I've, I've learned over the time to, to, to face it. It was okay. Uh, one day, my dad came up to me when I had a, a, a very bad moment and said, come on, I, I, I can't continue. This is too tough for me. This is too hard. I, I'm trying to face it. I'm trying to, to deal with it, but it's just not possible. It's not my character. He just said, adhere to your actions, you will never be loved by everyone. And this is something that stays, uh, I keep saying it to myself almost every day. It's not possible that everybody likes you. And this is very important, a very, very important message, at least for myself. Everything I'm saying here right now is for myself. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but this helped me a lot. So get rid of the thought that everyone will like you for everything you do all the time. This is not possible. And then I started when I, I, I tried, and I tried really hard to get along with that thought. And then I, I learned step by step to put myself into situations where I have to face criticism. Because criticism is very important. And I'd say at the age of 18, 19, Someone from newspapers came up to me, I can remember, it was actually a German a guy, who said, okay, you did that super good, you did, you did that right, and this was a super good move on track, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, thank you, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, honestly, also, if the race was very good, I want to hear what was not good, what I did bad. And that's how I can grow. And he, that guy wrote it then in the, this, this sentence in the newspapers, uh, because this was something that hardly anybody said. Because people tend to be liking to hear what, what they do good. But that's not where you're growing. What are you growing from? Okay, it gives you maybe self-confidence. Uh, self but you're growing out of, out of that constructive criticism. I'm talking about constructive, uh, constructive criticism, not the negative one. So that's about criticism. Expose yourself to it. Don't be afraid. Second one is commitment. Yeah, uh, I was super, super lazy when I was young. Like, honestly lazy. And then when I started to, to be on, on races a lot and uh, travel a lot, people just saw that I, I wasn't really so much into it and I, I, I liked to, to play games on my smartphone. Uh, and um, <laughs> I, I, I did. I concentrated on a lot of other things, and then I, I, I just didn't realize, didn't think about that. So many people were working so hard for me to be able to achieve my dream, to be able to do what I loved. Already uh, back then, I think there were around 25, 30 people just working on my go kart just responsible for me, and that's what I wasn't thinking about. I was too young, and I was just too lazy to think about it. So I had to ask myself at some stage, at a very young age still, do I really want this life and what it brings with it? 
because there's a lot, a lot of commitment. When you're 15, 16, 17 years old, your friends, but then I had friends, at least some, um, your, your friends start to go out, start to have fun, but you're always traveling at 250, 260, 270 days uh, a year, and it, you feel just like an alien. You, you just feel like you're not part of the society. But I answered the question to myself with a yes. I want to do this, and I need to learn to get that commitment, to get that focus. And so I put myself um, this uh, into my mind, just saying, OK, now what you do is you, OK, you have to do this. Otherwise, I, I was cutting myself with saying, otherwise, there's no racing. You have to have a grade average, a grade point average of 1.0. Otherwise, I would go to my, to my dad, go to the racing team and say, no, I won't race. It has never happened. But it was something for me that put pressure on myself to really having to do it, to really have to work hard for what I wanted to do. So I was yeah, basically undergoing a very performance-driven youth. You can imagine also with uh, the parents investing a lot of money in the back and, and the people working for you. But I, with, and this was a, a turning point, this, this, uh, uh, this, um, oh. No, that's the wrong way. For me, this was very, very important. I, I kept telling it to myself that I absolutely needed this. And from there on, I started to work and work and get into it. I'm not saying you can do it from one day to the other, but at least you can try and you will get there. That's for sure. You will. You're all able to do it. Extroversion. As I've told you before, I've been very insecure, which is really not good for extroversion, because that's something that you absolutely need in the, in the professional sports from at least quite an early stage on, because you need to, you're meeting a lot of people, you need to, you need to uh, talk in front of the media, you need to talk in front of a lot of people, you're exposed to, to, to a lot of people watching what you're doing. So, at the beginning, I tried to escape. And I had a really hard time finding sponsors because as a 13, 14 year old, already having to go to someone asking for $500,000, sometimes a million dollars, and this person doesn't, or company doesn't even know if you're good enough, if you're worth the investment, you have to sell yourself. And this was not me. So this was absolutely not my character. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep the, the, the nights before then, I was trembling, I, was, I had a really hard time. But again, I faced it. And this is, again, I, can, I put emphasis on it, facing it is very, very important. It's crucial to learn and to learn how to deal with these fears. And then, one day, I can remember, it was when I was 19, uh, I was, I was in front of, actually in front of the door of uh, Red Bull, you might know this company, and I said to myself, all right, if I don't go in there, I was super nervous, if I don't go in there, I can't continue my racing. This is not possible because I, I don't have the financial background to be able to continue, I was not, by, by then not in the position that a team would sponsor me or pay everything for me, so I said, okay, just fuck it, sorry for my expression. Just fuck it, just be true to yourself, and just do it the way you want. You don't have to change yourself. You don't have to sit in there and, and, and say, tell your phrases and then wait for, for something to happen. No, it, just be yourself, and this makes it a lot easier to sell yourself, okay? To sell your, your product also. And just don't think about what they could eventually think about you or if you're, if you're a shy boy or whatever. So, again, confrontation, that's the key word. So, back to the dinner. It tasted crap. So, you've absolutely, you did a sh shit job. It was overcooked and the ingredients didn't match to the rest. And you just there, you go back to the kitchen and you, you, you just, think, yeah, maybe like two or three of your friends are already on the way to the hospital because of, your, because of your food that you served. So you're in a real shit situation. You don't know 
what to say. You don't want to walk back out there. You don't want to do that walk. It's a, it's a fucking hard walk. And this is my last topic, my last ingredient that I figured out for myself I have to work on is growing through defeat or dealing with defeat. That throws me back to, my, to the accident that you've seen before. Crashes are quite a hard way to learn it. To, to deal with defeat. Because as I've described before, you're risking your life. I've seen a couple of friends of mine, racing drivers, die, being paralyzed today. So, so you're always exposed and you know you don't want to have another crash, but this naturally happens. And then put yourself back into the situation, there was silence. Suddenly you have to get out of the car and this is I can tell you, personally, this is the hardest, by far the hardest thing I've ever faced in life. Going out of the car, if you can by yourself, I did it. Going out of the car, and then suddenly it pops up in your mind, okay, you've just destroy, destroyed that mil, uh, multi-million dollar car. You've destroyed the work of a hundred and more people of a whole year. These people are in the garage and they are like men. They're like men, some big tall men. They are crying in there. And that all happened in front of yeah, 250,000 people at the place and hundreds of million people watching TV. And that's the walk, and this is the hard thing. The walk back to the garage, and there's so many thoughts. What should I say? What can I do? Can I please rewind it? But you can't. You're just confronted with the situation. You cannot. And this is, uh, and it, it, there's, you feel like you, you, you're walking, without a doubt, but you feel like there's no floor. There's nothing anymore. You're just falling. And I've had these situations a couple of times, naturally, because you're always on the limit of going over it. And then at some stage, I said to myself, okay, I, I have to do something because I cannot just take it and then work on it in my mind mentally and then just leave it and move on. Because as a racing driver, what we do, we always, we're perfect, perfect, perfect until we have a crash, bam, we drop back down. We feel like we have nothing. We can, we're not able to do anything. And then you have to build uh, back up uh, confidence. And that's what happens all the time. And I said to myself, okay, I need a tool to help me get through these times. And that's when I started drawing up a list. And this list contained a section where I had to write down what happened, what was I responsible for, whom I have to um, apologize to, and what can I do next time to be able to avoid this kind of mistake. And again, I'm not saying that this works out for every one of you, but for me personally, writing it down helped a lot. So it helped thinking about it. Reflecting, I have the word reflecting on it because it's a word that uh, I think everybody keeps on telling you, okay, reflect what you did. Reflecting is very important, but don't stick to it. Don't stay reflecting for too long because this destroys you mentally. And then after having some of the crashes with my list, I started to see a benefit in these kind of moments and to, to, to take the energy of the, this, uh, this defeat to, create, uh, to convert it into motivational energy. And I saw chances in defeat. And this is, again, my last point. It's very important. Defeats are not the end of the world, are not the end of your lives, but they, they are chances. And don't run away from them. Rather face them, rather confront them. So I hope that at least, okay, it is my personal story, but at least some of you can, can take some, something uh, out, of this, out of this room with them, uh, saying, okay, I, I can follow what he said, and uh, I'll try my best, and I won't run away. As I, I said, the overall topic of my speech is confrontation, and uh, just confront yourself with these kind of difficult moments, because out of that, you're going to grow. Thank you.